When the man gets home every day, his wife always pretends to be dead. She dies in various ways and for all kinds of reasons. What's going on? Hello everyone! Welcome to Cherry Clips. Today, I will be sharing a movie named, When I Get Home, My Wife Always Pretends to be Dead. John was married once, but after three years, their marriage life was hopeless, so they divorced. When John married Cindy, he promised her, when three years have passed since they got married, they should properly confirm each other's intentions if they are going to continue married life. The third year anniversary of that promise is coming. One day, John returns home from work. Cindy is lying on the ground with a mouthful of blood. John panics. He calls for an ambulance immediately. Surprisingly, Cindy grabs his ankle. She rises from the dead. It almost frightened John out of his senses. Later, Cindy confesses that it was a joke. Before John says anything, she goes to the kitchen and prepares dinner for him. She licks the ketchup off her chin and enjoys the delicious taste. John wonders what is going on here. Cindy doesn't explain herself. She makes fun of him for how scared he was. Well, this is just the beginning of various surprises. The next morning, Cindy asks John to give him a goodbye kiss on the way out. John is embarrassed. They're not a newly married couple. They've given up the routine for a long time. However, Cindy gives him a big hug. John throws away the shirt stained with ketchup. A neighbor notices the shirt. She's a little scared. John talks about Cindy's prank with his coworker, Simon. Simon can't figure out why Cindy did this. He comforts John that the married couple needs surprises to keep them refreshed. It's fun to play around like this. That night, John takes a deep breath before he opens the door. This time, Cindy's bitten to death by an alligator. John pulls her out of the alligator's mouth. Cindy thanks him for saving her life and happily goes to the kitchen. Her game continues. Sometimes she's caught in conflict. Sometimes she's carried out the honor of battle. Another time, she died when an arrow pierced through her head. The costumes and settings are well made. The neighbor has no idea what's going on and she's frightened by the tools and models. It's hard for John to calm her down. John is more and more worried. Why does Cindy waste time and money playing dead? Maybe there's something she's unhappy about. Maybe she wants attention. Once again, Cindy is shot by arrows in a battlefield. John decides to play along fully with the way she plays dead. All the efforts Cindy made are worth his cooperation. Now it's from one person play to a duet. It can be an innocent girl being operated on by aliens, or a vampire, or Juliet. Cindy even prints out a script for John. John is exhausted from hard work already. He can't keep up with the acting. He tries to talk with Cindy to stop this. Cindy refuses to explain to him. Simon suggests they have dinner together. Maybe Cindy will open up to his wife. Simon's wife has her own troubles. She envies Cindy's simplicity and vitality. Nobody mentions playing dead. They have a good time together. Cindy's game improves. From Farrah to victim, from scripts to costumes, John can expect everything. John suggests she take a part-time job in a cleaning shop. She can communicate with others and be more social. Cindy agrees. At night, Cindy talks in her sleep. What a beautiful moon, isn't it? It's strange to John. But as long as she stops playing dead, he doesn't think much about it. Unfortunately, even though Cindy goes to work, she continues with her game. Ghost. Ultraman. John has no idea where she gets these ideas. Until one day, Cindy dresses like a cat girl. John can't suppress his anger. He demands Cindy tell him clearly about her planning. Cindy is ambiguous. She just says, what a beautiful moon, isn't it? John invites Simon and his wife to have lunch at his house. Simon points out that Cindy's game brings pressure to John. Men are exhausted dealing with work. They need to relax at home. The game only costs John's energy. She should stop trying so hard. Before Cindy reacts, Simon's wife bursts into tears. She blames him for ignoring her feelings. It's quite awkward. Simon and his wife have been married for five years, but she can't bear children. She goes to the hospital every week. She can't hold the pressure from Simon's parents anymore. Cindy gives the alligator to her to ease the atmosphere. After the party, Cindy doesn't change her mind. She plays dead with more innovations. Every time John wants to talk with her, she changes the subject. In the end, she says, what a beautiful moon, isn't it? John develops the thought of divorce. Before anything happens to them, 
Simon and his wife get divorced. The hospital diagnosed Simon, who can't bear children, but his wife is too hurt to continue their marriage. It's a relief for both of them, but John and Cindy feel sorry for them. They're still in love, but they can't get along with each other. Cindy gets a phone call. Her father is dying in her hometown. She rushes back with John. She cries like a baby when she sees her father in the hospital. Her father talks with John alone. He tells John that Cindy's mother died early. He even thought about leaving the world together with Cindy. Then Cindy played hide and seek with him. She wanted to comfort him in her own way. It somehow worked. Cindy's father cheered up. John thinks about her recent actions. Is she trying to comfort him as well? They stay over in Cindy's old room. John looks through her books. He finally knows what a beautiful moon means. It's a subtle way to say, I love you. Cindy has responded to John's love repeatedly. After this period, they have survived the three-year promise, all because of Cindy's efforts. Life is exhausting, but as long as they love each other, they can find ways to get through all difficulties. John tries to surprise her one day. Well, no dinner for him. 